Professor Shane Harris from University of Illinois Springfield. I uh, have been teaching at uh, Springfield for mm, roughly about eight years now and uh, I was uh, offered a show by uh, Tim and uh, in a, a couple of years out and so um, here I am and having a solo show called Eye Candy and um, it's a show that involves maybe uh, you call miniature or small scale ceramic sculpture uh, mixed media and um, a lot of it has to do with um, uh, one series is called coupling and it's about the interaction of two objects or the non-interaction of two objects and the space in between and um, how that uh, that tension almost uh, like biology. If you look up the definition of it, um, it actually goes to biology rather than you would think coupling like a pipe, but that is in the definition, like um, down a ways. But um, so, you know, if you look at the objects that I make and there's always a pair or a couple and then they're coupling. Um, and so the, that kind of interaction, almost a biomorphic kind of, interaction happening um, and so there are a lot of suggestive components to the work um, and I use a lot of psychology and um, biology and color to draw you in kind of like the show indicates eye candy it looks like little pieces of candy <laughs> actually some do um, I'm inspired by surrealists like uh, if you look at um, Hans um, uh, Belmer and uh, Bosch uh, from the 14th century. Uh, he, Bosch, he um, was a painter, large-scale painter, but if you look at his objects and you look at his paintings a little closer, like um, basically collaged creatures. And for his time, he was like the surrealist of his time. And that has always inspired me. Garden of uh, Earthly Delights is uh, comes to mind, and um, it's three panels. I believe that one's three panels, and you know, if you look at all of those little creatures, that's kind of where my work kind of goes, you know. Um, so I was inspired by that, but then when I first started, uh, what happened was I, uh, the first time I ever slip cast, I tried to make them old but I did a terrible job making them old. And, um, but then I got better at it eventually, as we always do. And then um, ended up, we get this load of uh, molds for uh, a donation. And I'm like, oh, I'll just play around and see you know, what I can do with it. So basically I just started cutting uh, random like bear's ear or the rabbit's tail and then started using Christmas ornaments and then, and then I started collaging those together. And when I did that, then it became, they became kind of like creature-like. And, um, and then I give it a little orifice or add a little hair and a little of this, a little of that. And next thing you know, they, they start to come alive and um, position them not like a statue, but more have like an angle, like they're looking or they're curious. And, um, so that got me on the road. I was, I did, when I first started, I did some really rough work, uh, and I, it wasn't my style. <laughs> it was more my professor's style. And I realized that one of the most important things was to follow what I wanted to do, what my aesthetic was. And when you're young, you don't know, you just, you kind of follow and you mm -hmm. kind of do the routine and practice. And, uh, but these molds it kind of led to that kind of aha moment where, um, I like sleek, simple, yet sophisticated work. And it's a, it, people would think, well, you know, that's easy. It's actually a lot harder to do than uh, most people think because to get all of those in, in terms of elements and some work is very difficult because you're talking simple. And, um, and when people think simple, that's easy. It's not necessarily <laughs> easy. Um, and to become sophisticated, you know, in then complexity, like coupling, you know, the complexity of the idea of coupling and how that works through our society as a whole is a complex idea and biology, mm -hmm. but it happens, right? And so that's kind of where 
I'm at now and with the sleek I just that's I've always liked that like a kind of like a 50s um, souped up car really kind of awesome finish and beautiful chrome um, that's kind of where the sleek part comes in so when I think of all those ideas and then mash this together that's where I'm at but a lot of times how I work I work in mass quantity so I you know all like all of these here I work you know, maybe 20 pieces at a time, and then I'll just start playing. It's almost like a curiosity. I'll start playing with the objects, and I'll be like, oh, this material needs a little material here, a little material there. Now, it doesn't work out all the time. Some of them are just like, oh, those are bad. Like, I, And then I push those aside, and, and I don't put those in the kind of rotation of the objects. Mm -hmm. um, but you can really tell when enough is enough, like uh, because you don't want to add too much because then it takes away from the actual object. A lot of the parts are from familiar things, but I've cut them and abstracted them and and um, put color on there that you probably wouldn't, you know, think that oh that's a bunny's ear, you know, or um, but man it looks like a tongue, uh, but it's a bunny's ear, you know, uh, type of thing because of how I've um, integrated the clay, the glaze, the painting, the mixed media. I think that's another important point is that, you know, uh, transitions are huge. So like I'll come and I'll carve for an hour in one area of a little piece just to make sure that transition is a nice smooth transition rather than just slapping on a part and then slapping on another part. I actually want to integrate them so that they look like they're originally one piece. My wife is like, are you done at the grocery store yet? Because uh, I'm sitting there looking at everything, possibility, you know, I, like what can I take a mold of that becomes new? Um, and it, there's so many little parts. If, if you um, go into my studio, my studio is like a little play playground uh, of material. My wife calls me a hoarder, but I'm actually an artist that enjoys material. Right, because um, I have all this material. Sometimes I don't use it, sometimes I will. And then I have things that I have a, a, a bin just waiting, like cast, please cast me uh, bin when I ever have time to, <laughs> to actually uh, do it. I've just always had a knack for material. And even when I was an undergrad, like how I put this material with this material um, and how they interact. Um, not just in clay, but you know, other classes. Because I also have a, a sculpture degree. I have an undergrad. I have, a, I have two BFAs. I have a BFA in um, ceramics, mm -hmm. and I didn't get into grad school. So then I said, well, you know what? What am I going to do for a year? Because I want to apply to grad school, and and I and I want to get into some of the best schools. So I said, well, I'll apply. I'll I'll wait another year. I only need thirty hours. I got a sculpture degree. And I got a second BFA, and it was huge. And that next year, and that's when my work became my work, that next year. And if you look at my uh, first portfolio I applied with to my second portfolio, you would actually see, like, whose work was this? Mm -hmm. And this work is, like, what I make now. You know, um, not exactly what I make now, but, you know, you could tell, like, oh, this is definitely influenced. Um, so that was, like, kind of the moment in, in undergrad. And, uh, and having that second degree. And then I, I got into all the schools I applied to. So I got my choice, um, and which was, you know, for me, I worked hard to get there and pay my way through school. So as most kids, you know, working class do. Um, and I, I went to Indiana University for grad school and I'm, I'm grateful I went there. Went and studied at the Kinsey Institute for Sexuality reproduction and um, gender and then I had a professor that was a master mold maker and so I my first mold to what I can make now I can actually make a very professional looking mold like you would you'd be like wow did that come from a factory mm -hmm. um, you know I made that so um, where my first mold you're like oh man my daughter might be able to make a better mold than that uh, if I give her a little plaster, a little material, you know. I've been doing this for a little while now, This, these objects, and people always ask me, you should go bigger, you should try bigger. But see, the thing about my work is like, 
I've gone, I've tried a couple of bigger things. I've worked on a few large scale works. I have, I have in the works, uh, but it just doesn't have the same feel because it's like this small um, flower, right? And it's very intimate and you have to get up close where the large scale just doesn't have that same impact. And so um, it's, yeah, I, I don't know, I, my next venture, I haven't thought ahead um, on that one yet. I'm kind of just right now finishing what I'm working on and, um, and then we'll see where you know next year takes me or next school year, I mean, um, or the summer. So I, I always tell my students hard work is, is really important. Your effort is half the battle and not in the tenacity not to give up. And even when someone says to you, no, you, you know, why are you in art? What are you doing? Um, because I was a business major and I didn't, I didn't like it. I hated it. And my wife was like, you love, you come home and the only thing you talk about is art. And you never talk about business. And why are you in business? And so for me, it was like, do what you love and the other stuff will come. You know, if you're passionate about what you do and your art and what, you know, um, in any field, that the other stuff will happen. Um, and there are, yes, there will be hard times along the way, but because you're passionate and you love what you do, the other stuff, you know, is what makes it important, you know. And um, so I followed that. And once I changed my major to art, I never looked back. Thank you.